the end of boom bust as we know it, Bridgewater said that in the last 24 hours in that chair. Your view? Yes, certainly. I think we, we, we go through cycles. We go through credit cycles. And my view is that we've got a number of quarters of, of solid growth in our core markets in front of us. We're investing for growth in the United States. We're investing for growth in all our business in Canada. And, uh, you know, we're kind of in a holding pattern in Europe, but we're seeing, you know, a little bit better performance. So I think right. for us, we're seeing, you know, a, a decent cycle ahead that we're investing for growth. And, uh, you know, we've got a monetary situation where there's not a lot of stimulus left. And therefore, fiscal stimulus will, will manage those cycles and, mm -hmm. and a more moderate interest rate cycle. You have a sure. different view and a more informed view. The romance of the rail systems across Canada, which is commodities ending up in Vancouver and all that movement over to China. Mm -hmm. What do your economists and what do, frankly, your distributive bank in Canada say about mm -hmm. the dynamics of China right now? Well, certainly, uh, you know, we've had a more challenging year with China-Canadian relationship, as you've all read in the paper, where we've started to reverse course. China's purchasing more uh, agriculture commodities where they had stopped purchasing canola for a short period of time. So we're seeing a return to, to more growth in, in the exports of certainly our agriculture commodities. Our, our strategy is to, in the country is to really focus on plant-based protein, to use our land, to use our water, to use our, our access to those markets, our free trade agreements, TPP, to access those markets. So I see longer term growth from that. Yeah. As far as energy commodities, certainly it's driven by the strength of the Chinese economy as we've seen it come off because of the trade tensions, obviously that has an impact. Any but, pressure on financing some of the oil coal firms over in Canada at the moment? Has that come up in these meetings in the last couple of days? Absolutely. I mean, it was at the Energy Governors Forum, at their own Bankers Forum. What do you we're say in back a transition. What do you say back to them? That we're in a transition. That we're move we have a, a longer-term transition as we change the energy source. We move to a, a greener grid, move to a greener economy. But it is a transition. And we, to make this transition and to have the tax base and the cash flows and the strong economy to make the transition, you need fossil-based fuels to make that transition. They're not going away overnight. And I think a lot of the anger and the, the calls for immediate stop of investment in fossil fuels is because we don't ha and we haven't articulated a plan to get to Paris Accord, to get to net zero 2050. We haven't done it as a country, we haven't done it as a, a collection well, of countries, well. therefore... I think what we're missing is an articulation of a plan to replace your fossil fuels, have the debate, but we still are going to need those fossil fuels to make the transition, whether it's agriculture, what's transportation. Everybody knows we're not making the transition overnight. Okay. Therefore, yes, we have to invest. Otherwise, you're going to see $150 oil prices plus, and that's more destabilizing to our global economy right. and slower on growth than... You would expect. May I come so. up with the theme here on the second day of Davos? What's that happens. theme? Well, your excellence, it's boom bust Davos. Yeah. Is the energy business, and I think of Icon and Occidental and the Anadarko split up down in America and all that, but from your view with RBC, the Royal Bank of yeah. Canada, is it an industry where it could be boom coming off a terrible bottom, or is it just survival for not only Canadian energy, but global energy? No, it's a great question. I think. There's a lot of mixed signaling from capital markets and investors into the energy sector. And you're seeing a number of reactions. You're seeing some mid-sized and smaller firms start to hoard cash because they're not mm -hmm. sure they're going to have access to capital to drill. So you're seeing a very different stop buying back shares, you know, watching their investments carefully. You're seeing larger companies have access and have articulated a transition plan for lowering the energy footprint to, to produce energy. They're more confident in their plan that they're going to have access to capital markets. So I think... We have to come together, public and private sector, to articulate this path forward mm -hmm. so this sector can attract capital. Otherwise, you're going to see a wide range of capital strategies and cash flow strategies uh, in the sector. Speaking of the commodity business over the last 10 years, whether it's been in mining or energy, the C-suite has been focused on value over growth. Right. In the financial sector, your sector, there seems to be a massive push now for scale. Yes. Exactly. For growth. And not necessarily just value. What's your strategic vision with scale in mind? You know, the scale game's changing, and we all, st we all have competed the last 20 years on domestic scale. If you have domestic scale in each of your core industries, whether it's banking or manufacturing, and you're serving a client base domestically, that scale translated into market share and economic gain. What's different, and what the, the, you know, the, the talk here, and what I've taken away from, from Davos uh, 2020, is that global scale is taking over. Global scale in data, global scale in client franchises, global scale in manufacturing and production, 
And for a smaller country like Canada, how do you build partnerships? How does RBC build partnerships to create data scale, value scale? How do we expand our value propositions? We are on this path before in, in yep. redefining our business model and redefining how we're going to serve customers. I, I'm leaving here with a greater sense of urgency and a greater sense to partner to create global scale. And those are the conversations I've been having with a number of partners here in Davos.